But what was your job title at that point? Because um, I went from running the engine shop to the vice president. Vice President, is that good a vice president of competition? Yeah, and did you want that job? No. How come you had to get put in that position? Um, you know, I really enjoyed working with, with Ty. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, so he leaves, and that you basically filled that role. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, we, I, we've had a lot of people come in here from DEI, and we've talked, uh, we talked around and around and around about that time. And I sort of have, you know, <clears throat> I have some, you definitely, you know, like we all do, I have some mixed feelings about it, right? <clears throat> Especially knowing what I know now about life and being a professional and being accountable and who I was back then and, and all the mistakes and missteps. Um, and, you know, it's, it's uh, I will say that I... Love hearing how much you enjoyed working with Ty. Um, I always, um, you know, always felt like that you had a really level head. Um, I, I, did, I, I can kind of see where you're coming from in terms of not really wanting to be in that position that you were put in to be the sort of the decider and the referee. Uh, but, um, you know, we had this great year in 2004. Me and Tony Sr. and Tony Jr. had a great year at least. Um you know, there was the rest of the company <clears throat> outside of that. We we have a habit of just looking at it from my point of view and as a driver of the eight car. We had a great year, you know, and we get to uh, Homestead and in about, <clears throat> in about 48 hours, me and Tony Jr. and Tony Sr. went from a f- six-win team to – not com- not even talking, couldn't even talk, arguing. Any any communication between the one of us resulted in you know a bunch of you know just nastiness, you know. And I think it must have been uh, broadcasts, you know, everything on the radio, and it was just a, you know a bad deal. Um, we get into the. I guess I don't remember if it was immediately after that or what, but we, I remember sitting down with you and going, I think I need to do something different. And I tell everybody, and I've said it on this show, I think my biggest mistake in my career was trying to think that I needed to be somewhere else or with someone else than Tony Sr. and Tony Jr. I don't know that you carry any responsibility yourself with what went on during all that time, but I don't think you should. Um, you know, I felt like that for whatever reason in that moment, I thought I knew what I needed and I was the last person that probably needed to make any of those type of decisions or influence any of that. Um, going Pete Rondo is a great man, very nice guy, capable of doing a great job, but he was put in a difficult situation and I wasn't a, a mature enough to manage that. Um, you know, 05 was a was a bit of a struggle for all of us. Um, but I wasn't, you know, there, there's, I, I wasn't making the deal any better. I wasn't helping how things were going, but, you know, eventually I got, I regretted the decision and asked if we could get it all, you know, unpacked and put it all back together. Yep. And we tried, um, you know, and the, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, the 07 season was a, I don't even remember it all that much other than it being very frustrating. There was a lot of issues on and off the track, but um, none of that had anything to do with you, you know, and I don't know where you are emotionally or mentally about all that part of your life. I know that, you know, that took a toll on you. Yep. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how you feel about it, but, um, I don't know if you have frustrations at me or toward me. I know that you wouldn't ever, you know, we, you're, I know who you are and I know you wouldn't ever say a, a bad word about anybody, but, um, I want you to know, man, like I take a lot of responsibility for that period of time. 
um, and being who I was and who I should, who I wasn't, and who I should have been. Um, I was driving for one of the best teams in the garage in 2004. We were winning races. We had a, we had one of the best sponsors, all the ingredients, the best, you know, everything was going well, considering who we had lost and where we could have been. That company was kicking some ass. And I wasn't old enough or mature enough to see what I should have been doing or could have been doing to help us progress and continue on that path, you know. And so I take a lot of responsibility for where the I went from 2004 to 2007. And, um, and I know that you do, you, 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 you know, we're, we're a part of trying to keep us going in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, things, things went where they went, but they had, for me, man, that had, you know, the decisions that I ultimately ended up making and going to drive for Rick were rooted in other issues that I had, you know, outside of driving a race car. But, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. We had, you know, we had some great times together and I regret how, I regret how that ended for both of us. Um, but I will say that, you know, I don't, I really thought the world of you and appreciated um, how you handled not only the good times, but some of the tougher times you were always a professional. I never, ever, you know, in some of the worst times, you know, you, you learn who people really are and you find out what's being said when you're not in the room, you know, and I can promise everybody that, you know, Richie Gilmore was, was as, as good and as true as anybody that I was dealing with during that period of time. But I know, you know, it's probably not your fondest, fondest part of your career. (laughs) I, you know, I, I really look back at it was we were dealt a bad hand. Uh, nobody, nobody's seen it coming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my passion my whole life has been engines. Um, so when, you know, when Ty left, um, it was a tough deal for all of us because, you know, most days I went to lunch with Ty or, or Steve Steve and Steve, probably, you know, one of my best friends in, in life, um, you know, is, is, was, I, you know, was experienced life and telling stories with Steve Meal. And there's no better storyteller than Steve Meal. Yeah. And probably one of my, my best friends still to this day is Steve Crisp. Is not a nice, nicer guy than Steve Crisp. And um, having that time with them guys. And even now I do business and work with, with Ty on a regular basis with Trackhouse. And we, we, we got a great relationship. Um, but I think the um, st- trying to do run a company and still run the engine shop was the toughest side. I probably should have got more help on the engine side, you know, because trying to do that, at night um, and not have the right help and going up to ECR and, and taking that over and getting good help made me realize what I what I did wrong at um, at DEI because now I was surrounding myself up there with really good people and we did and you and I talked about it we you know we try to get Bobby Hutchison to come help us and some some good people like that and um and that's the key to be to success is surround yourself with good people. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below and don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mode Media content.